Hey friends! So today I wanted to do a book review and discussion video on Geek Love by Katherine Dunn. How I want to do this is in the first half of the video I'll do a book review in which if you haven't read this book I'll try to convince you that you should read this book because obviously I liked it. And then I'll um, fair warning and then in the second half of the video I'm going to do more of a discussion and I'm going to go more in depth about themes and what happens. And so if you haven't read it already you might not want to watch that part. Um, so you can Turn it off at that point if you want, and then maybe come back after you've read it. So, let's do this. It's about a circus family. And so, essentially, the carnival is passed down to Al, who is our main character's father. It's not doing very well, and so one day he's walking through a garden, and he sees a bunch of multicolored roses, and he gets the great idea to design children to help with the carnival. As what better gift can you give your children than the ability to sustain themselves and make money off of just being themselves? Which is kind of beautiful in a weird way. So anyways, he goes back and he goes back home and when his wife gets pregnant, he gives her all of these concoctions of drugs and things to try and ensure that the child will have deformities and that they can then use it in circuits. After that, we're tackling the idea of designing children, but from a very interesting and unique perspective that I haven't seen done before. <laughs> before. You often hear about this um, in terms of an ethical issue of getting closer to being able to determine gender and eye color and all of those things with your child. So I thought that it was a very interesting take and while I don't think that the book really had an opinion on either side, it was just kind of something interesting to think about when reading it. Four or five children, depending on how you see it because one is a set of Siamese twins and our main character is one of their children named Ollie and she is a bald albino hunchback and even with all of that going on she's still the least extraordinary of her siblings and she has a lot of issues with self-worth because of that because she's not as interesting and unique as her siblings and she doesn't bring as much money to the family. It's clear early on that these characters love being different and they love having deformities and they look down on norms because they feel like they have power over norms for being different. We see that especially in Ollie. We also see it in the fact that her brother has a lot of issues with jealousy or the other siblings making more money than him and things like that. In that way this book really kind of bolsters disability pride in a sense. Um, this book was written in 89, I believe, um, but I, I think that it's it's really relevant today because there is such a huge disability pride movement happening, and I think that this uh, coincides well with the ideals, even though it's not fully in the category. I feel like there's there's similarities, at least in my mind anyways. Something else that I thought was really interesting about it was the fact that our characters hate on norms, and they think that they're better than them, and that they're so much different than them, but at the same time, they still evaluate their self-worth based on their physical appearance and how much money they can bring to the family, which obviously is exactly what we, as norms, do. Made for a really, really interesting juxtaposition. It made some of the other themes that came up were incest, self-destruction as a form of enlightenment, religion, and jealousy, as I've already stated. I'll touch on further in the discussion part because I feel like they might kind of give some things away. So I really liked this book. I thought it was very beautifully written. I enjoyed the interesting take on issues and I enjoyed the themes and I loved the characters and I thought it was great. Uh, the reason that I didn't give it five stars was because I found that sometimes the prose was a little bit overwhelming, which I know is like weird to say, um, but sometimes as I would be reading along, a sentence would kind of confuse me almost and then when I would reread it I would be like wow that sentence is so beautiful but because it was so eloquent and it was so full of character and sometimes in a quick read through you didn't get exactly what happened so I felt like some of the themes weren't fully developed that also could have been just me not understanding which is quite likely four and a half out of five I highly recommend that you read it if you do please tell me what you think and so I'm going to start going further into the themes that I touched on a little bit before, and so if you are interested in hearing that, keep watching, otherwise read it and then come talk to me. So, uh, of 
the themes in the book is incest. Holly with her brother and ends up having his child. I thought that was interesting because obviously our first reaction to incest is disgust, hopefully. And after that, like the reason that incest is unethical is because it could have negative implications on the child be born with deformities. Remember, I read a book on ethics called The Righteous Mind, a part in there on incest, and they were asking people, the brother and sister are both consenting, and there's absolutely no chance that they can have a child. Is it okay for them to have sex? And I think it is. Like, as gross and as weird as it is to say, in this situation, if having deformities is what you're striving for in the child and is your ideal outcome, then, and both brother and sister are consenting, I will, I mean, I guess Artie wasn't really consenting, but then it would be okay. But it was, it was kind of interesting to think about it in that way because you're trying to think of it from Ollie's perspective. You, I guess, kind of see where she's coming from. The theme of interest was self-destruction as a form of enlightenment. So we see this both with um, Artie's cult as well as Miss Lick. I noticed that there were some differences between them because Artie seemed to have the best interest of the norms enlightenment in mind, or so he said, anyways, whereas Miss Lick seemed to be more concerned with men thwarting his development of becoming the full person they can be. Because her, what to make of it, I wasn't sure whether or not it was just um, another touch on the theme of jealousy, in the sense that Miss Lick wasn't able to get male attention and so she was jealous of women who could, or if it was a statement on how much pressure we as women put on ourselves for physical appearance, or I don't know, but I thought that that was a very interesting difference between the way that Artie approached it and the way that Miss Lick approached it. And I also felt like it really tied back the idea of self-worth being tied to physical appearance, but again, in the different ways, in the complete opposite way that we're used to seeing it, we're assuming that people with deformities are so much more enlightened and have such a larger perspective on the world, I guess, because they're not so caught up in their physical appearance and the pressure of being normal. I thought that was interesting. I did think, which again is maybe just me not understanding, but I didn't think that this idea was fully thought out about how these physical deformities were going to enlighten them. Um, I mean, maybe I just didn't understand to the full extent, because I can understand the idea of destruction being a way to reinvent yourself, but I just feel like it wasn't fully emulated in the book, but I mean, maybe other people see it differently. The last theme that I wanted to touch on was religion and um, some sort of omnipresent power having control over women's bodies. I thought that it was really interesting that even though the twins didn't abide by Artie's cult religion, that they still forced into doing what Artie wanted, they weren't able to have an abortion, even though they were technically raped. As we know, religion doesn't allow abortion, and even if you are not religious yourself, if you live in the United States, I'm under the impression, I'm Canadian, so I don't know too much about American politics, but I'm under the impression that there are certain states where abortion is still illegal. So even if you aren't religious yourself, you are still forced to make a decision that you don't want to because everyone else is going along with this religion and saying, oh, sorry, there's nothing I can do. I thought that this was another very interesting juxtaposition because the family is so concerned with not being normal and being so different from everyone, but yet they don't think for themselves and they just follow whatever Artie wants, and whatever Artie wants isn't in their best interest, it's in Artie's best interest. And the only one who seems to be immune from this is one of the twins and Artie. But, as I said, I think Artie is supposed to represent God because he is artificially inseminating Ollie. He is controlling the twins' bodies and not allowing them to have an abortion and controlling everyone around them to, to the point that they can't get an abortion. Oh, he's jealous. He's controlling. He's spiteful. 
and he can't survive and he can't exist without the support of his followers because Artie doesn't have the ability to take care of his physical bodily functions because the fact that he is a fish. I think that that is also a huge statement on if Artie is supposed to represent God, that God only exists and is still relevant because people keep him alive in today's society by continuing to believe in him. And without their belief, God would be obsolete and die. I thought that was also really interesting, if that was what she was trying to get at. And I also thought that it was really interesting that Chick is really the one with the godlike power. And if we were going to worship someone, it should be Chick, because he has such a unworldly, magnificent power that can be so helpful to so many people. And yet we're worshiping Artie, who can't do anything. All I really liked it, I thought that it touched on some really interesting issues, and I loved the characters, as I said. One thing also that I didn't like was I wasn't super thrilled about the fire at the end, because I felt that that was kind of like a cheap way out of her kind of shorten the book a little bit and speed things along by just killing everyone off, because they kind of came out of nowhere. Even though I guess technically all fires come out of nowhere, because if you knew it was coming, then it wouldn't do any damage. But I don't know, in my head somehow it was like a cheap way out. So I wasn't super thrilled about it. If you read this book, please let me know and leave a comment of how you liked it. If you disagree with everything I said, so I'm really interested to hear your thoughts and I will see you later.